in this video let's discuss various cellular reactions to injury so depending upon the nature of injury whether it's a reversible or irreversible type usually the cells respond and this response is a form of adaptive mechanism so the various cellular reactions to injury are as follows so we have atrophy hypertrophy aplasia hypoplasia hyperplasia and last but not the least metaplasia so these are various cellular reactions which we can anticipate whenever there is an injury right so as the name itself indicates atrophy is decrease in the cell size volume as well as decrease in cell mass so atrophy there is a decrease in cell mass or cell size whereas hypertrophy is the opposite of atrophy so hyper increase a, a means it indicates absence or a decrease right so hypertrophy there is increase in cell mass and aplasia as i said a indicates absence there is lack of cells right so absence or lack of cells in case of aplasia and in hypoplasia hypo it means there is decrease decrease in number of cells so that's hypoplasia hyperplasia is opposite to that of hypoplasia where there is increase in the number of cells right and metaplasia is a reversible phenomena where uh, one type of cell where one type of differentiated cell changes into the other type right so it's a change in cell type so let me just discuss the consequences of these reactions so that it will be easier for you to understand and remember. So this atrophy usually it results in decrease in size of tissues or organs which are involved right. So this decrease in size of tissues or organs can be secondary to decreased neurovascular supply or decreased nutrition or decreased endocrinal stimulation right so these can be some of the reasons why there is atrophy on the other hand hypertrophy is commonly seen when the, whenever there is increased workload for example when you are exercising so what happens there is hypertrophy or increase in the cell mass or size right so hypertrophy leads to or results in increase in tissue or organ size and this is usually seen secondary to increased workload the best example would be exercising weightlifting right and coming to aplasia usual aplasia results in agenesis agenesis is absence of generation or absence of a tissue or organ right and hypoplasia there is usually decrease in number of cells leads to again decrease in the size of tissues or organs which are involved right so hyperplasia and hyperplasia usually hyperplasia there will be increase in size of organs as well as tissues and the best example would be glandular breast enlargement in case of pregnancy right so glandular breast enlargement in case of pregnancy it's an example for hyperplasia and coming to metaplasia it's a change in cell type right one differentiated cell now uh, changes to another differentiated cell so it's a reversible change and usually we have many examples for this metaplasia right so the best example which i can give you is barrett's esophagus b a double -R, r e double t apostrophe s Barrett's esophagus 
So usually in lower esophagus, because of gastric reflex disease or because of the acidic environment present in the lower esophagus, in case of pathology that is such as gastric esophageal reflex disease, there will be transformation of squamous cells to columnar cells, right? So squamous cells are transformed to columnar cells in case of Barrett's esophagus. The other example would be in case of respiratory tract in patients who smoke chronically. In chronic smokers, there is transformation of pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelium to squamous epithelium, right? So columnar cells transforming into squamous cells in case of respiratory tracts of chronic smokers, right? And also I can give you another example such as in case of cervix, there will be transformation of columnar cells to squamous cells when the pH of vagina is very low, right? So these are some of the examples uh, where we find metaplasia, right? And there are few instances where we find both hypertrophy as well as hyperplasia the best example would be uterine enlargement in case of pregnancy where we find both hypertrophy as well as hyperplasia and coming to gingival hypertrophy or gingival hyperplasia this gingival hypertrophy is commonly seen secondary to uses of various drugs and, re and remember those drugs by the short form or mnemonic pick so whenever you find a gingival hyperplasia just assume that you're taking a pick right for examining so pick stands for p for phenytoin i for immunosuppressant such as cyclosporin c for calcium channel blockers such as nifedipine right so gingival hyperplasia is seen secondary to uses of certain drugs such as PIC. So it's a mnemonic. PIC, P stands for phenytoin, anti-epileptic drug. I stands for immunosuppressant such as cyclosporin. And C stands for calcium channel blockers such as nifedipine. So to summarize, these cellular reactions to injury that basically uh, adapt to mechanism being incorporated by various cells in order to sustain the injury and depending upon the type of cellular reaction, we have various changes happening within the tissues or organs and among these, metaplasia is very important and I have discussed various examples such as Barrett's esophagus and changes happening in airways in case of chronic smokers etc. Right? And also I mentioned an example where we find both hypertrophy as well as hyperplasia that's a uterine enlargement and most importantly in the oral context that is we have gingival hyperplasia and the best way to remember the drugs which cause gingival hyperplasia is the mnemonic or the shorter form PIC PIC where P stands for phenytoin I stands for immunosuppressant example cyclosporin and C stands for a calcium channel blocker an example nifedipine right so these are some of the cellular reactions seen as a response to injury right hope it's clear thank you